yeah. Very right, welcome yeah. back, everyone. I um, I I just want to do a quick introduction. I only have two things. Uh, one is uh, where's Connor? Connor, really thank Connor again for uh, uh, hospitality. Thank you for dinner. It was really nice. Um, Thank you for the hospitality all over. It's it's really uh, really been a nice couple of uh, couple of days. I'm quite sure this one will be successful as well. But yesterday was already <coughs> really good. So thank you. Uh, again, raise the bar for Lasso the next one. So don't don't <laughs> want to put the pressure on. But... Um, and the second thing is uh, the second slide from Ivandro, this uh, safe harbor statement. So I just want to make sure that we're actually recording as well for this. Yeah. And they can hear us, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just again, uh, safe harbor statements to be to make everyone aware that every, everything that's being said in this room and online falls under this safe harbor. So if you decides to buy any stocks of these companies based on what's said here, it's your problem. Um, so that creates an environment for us where one can just uh, speculate and guess on the future of IFC and implementations. Um, so read this also for the people online and watching the recording. It's important you read this before you move on. Thank you. Then um, the agenda for today is uh, validation service. We start with that. I think that's at the moment, it's the crown jewel of uh, 4.3 implementation. It, like I said yesterday, I, we don't want to call it reference implementation, but it is very close to that. Uh, we really think it's very, it can be very supportive for people who implement IFC 4.3. This is also where a lot of issues come up. So that's why it's related to implementers forum. We might not be able to do this before lunch, as said on the agenda. But uh, like I said, B is the D after lunch. We don't have Arthur, so um, I, I don't want to <clears throat> put it on you to listen to me again for an hour and a half. So we might take some time after lunch as well before it implements for evaluation service, depending on how, how we do that. Uh, but at, at least the whole morning until lunch is all Ivandro. So please start for that. So, um... Again, it's flexible, like yesterday. So let's see how, how you react and let's play with that. Um, the first part is an introduction on the validation service, what it is, what it does, uh, a bit of a high level view. And then we go uh, straight away into the first workshop slash uh, tutorial, where Joanne is going to show you how to install and deploy validation service in your on your own machine. Uh, just in case you don't know, it's a web service, but it's open source, the code is accessible, so you can deploy it in your machine. And Joanne is going to demonstrate uh, how. If you wish, you can follow along. Uh, if you get lost, don't worry. There's a recording, so you can use it as, as a tutorial for homework. And then the second uh, workshop is more on your input on uh, the records that we are producing at the moment as a result of the validation service and uh, um, the new feature, the features that we are uh, that you would like to see develop. Uh, you will see that the validation service is very much in its beta version, so we really appreciate we really appreciate any kind of input. So without um, wasting too much time, straight into the introduction, what the validation service is. Um, you can read it up. Uh, it's a free online platform for validating IFC file. It's developed by Building Smart um, with the help of software vendors and see and the uh, some building smart projects. Um, what it does, it's given an IFC file, it's checking this file, um, it's providing a judgment of conformity, so it's checking this file against the IFC standard. And when we say IFC standard, we do mean schema and specification, meaning the attached documentation. That's that's really important. You will see it in a, yeah, right away. So but it's actually being checked. Syntax, like forgetting to close a parenthesis. Okay, so, but sometimes you get also this kind of mistakes. Um, schema, and when schema, with schema we mean also uh, not only the entities and the relationship, but also the where rules and the functions that are embedded in the schema. 
So till recent uh, time, let's say, most validation were kind of forgetting or passing over these where rules and functions. So in case you don't know, there are some constraints embedded into the FC schema. Um, and this tool is now checking most of them. Uh, we just released this feature uh, one month ago. It's it's under development, but it's already already alighted a couple of mistakes and problems with the schema. Here is an example of non web rule, but another type of schema error. In this case, is a it's a string instead of an it's, sorry, it's an integer instead of a string. Uh, that's it's uh, contradicting the the schema, the data model. And most importantly, uh, other rules that apply to the standard, again, standard is schema plus specification. This falls into two main categories, implementers agreements and informal propositions. So formal propositions, aka where rules and functions are formal, so they are part of the scheme. But if you browse the documentation, which is not much better than before, you will find informal propositions and um, you will not find implementers agreement. That's the issue. So further constraints, further <coughs> specification on how you should implement IFC. So these rules are normative, highly normative, but somehow they are plain text or they're not the same. The, the check of these rules is not automated. So this is what the validation service is trying to do. In this case, you have an example of an informal proposition. So if you browse the documentation under the IFC closed shell entity, you will, at a certain point, you will find a piece of text that says, every edge shall be referenced exactly twice by the loops of the state. Clear, right? So, not the validation service is checking that actually these edge is referenced twice in clockwise and counterclockwise direction by these two faces. So this is a geometrical check that some uh, IFC files are failing, and this is one of the reasons why sometimes passing an IFC file and trying to display it and visualize it in a viewer doesn't end it up uh, well. Another example of rule is implementer's agreement. So one very famous is there must be exactly one IFC side element in every IFC file. Can't be otherwise. This is an implementer agreement. It's captured in a database of implementer agreement. Text, again, uh, what we're trying to do with a validation service that we're taking all these agreements and formal propositions and automate uh, their checks. Questions so far? I think you have one in the chat, um, if anyone's like it. Can you read it? <coughs> yeah. Are not all informal propositions in documentation just explanations of where rules? I cannot remember any example when it does not. No. Formal propositions are translated as where rules. Informal propositions are text. So probably I, I don't know, maybe it's, I said informal propositions before. So formal propositions equals where rule. So whenever you find a formal proposition <coughs> documentation, in the express schema, there's always a correspondent where rule. Maybe I can show that. <clears throat> Going by heart, so let's hope I found one. I'll find an example. But formal propositions are translated to um, where rules where informal propositions are just text. So that's the extra bit that the validation service is checking. If where rules are, are in the second part and the informal propositions are here, part of the additional rules. Yes? How about check non manifold there are cases one age shared by three faces. That's an additional check. 
that we could add to the validation service. Good point. Yeah. And there are also cases that um, kind of uh, reads out of those liver uh, volumes. And uh, those are uh, like below the tolerances are those situations. Um, not this one in particular, especially the one that are dealing with tolerances. But that's a very good point. Again, the whole purpose is just to define these different containers, these different types of checks, but they're not done yet. Actually, we've just started about these rules. You will see that in a moment we have 10, 12 rules, but they can easily be 50, 60, 100, yeah. So if you're saying that there's a formal and informal, what falls outside the scope of this validation service? Good point. Next slide. Okay. Um, so if what is being checked primarily is clear, let me also say that uh, we do checks. We do check also the STD. So yesterday you you saw some example of files that have been enriched or amended uh, with the STD information coming from the STD. The validation service is checking those files against uh, the STD domain. So when receiving a file and when uh, it finds a classification reference to the STD domain. The validation services retrieving the information from that domain and checking the RC files against those information. Yeah, I will show a record uh, example. But it's not being checked. It's anything that is project specific, national specific, organization specific, uh, so case specific requirements, all external rules. Sorry, must have these properties. There must be three alignments, two for the road, one for the bridge. Uh, all objects must have a name. Those kind of case specific requirements are not checked. So is it fair to say that anything in an IDS would not fall in? Very good point. Right. This is basically a, a check that's more global than an IDS. Absolutely. This is like before handing over the book to you, checking that the syntax, the grammar, the structure, it's fine, so that you can read it. Okay. Is that a 1.0 or never? But yeah, yes. That's one of the questions, actually, in the next Mentimeter that we wanted to ask you. So <clears throat> the, the background of the validation service is um, then there's a lot of these examples where uh, someone receives an IFC file, can't open it because uh, imports just sort of close an error. And then you get this endless discussion on, okay, what's wrong? Is the file wrong or is the, uh, is the import, is the software to blame? And then someone opens it in Solibri and it opens there. So, hey, the file's correct and we blame the software. Uh, but in many cases, the file is not correct. Uh, just so we create some specific on these schema errors. So there's this endless uh, debate going on. And that's that's the reason why a lot of the vendors, and many of the bigger vendors, ask us to have this one validation service that is yeah, close to a reference implementation to basically say this is correct or this is incorrect. Um, and that grew, I mean, we have that now. We also see potential for software certification. There's a lot of there's a lot of, um, and not necessarily gray area, but there's a lot of things in there that, uh, that can be warnings to users, like uh, we're using IFC correctly, but not in a common way, so this might cause issues while it's still a valid file. Um, so it, that's, that's the background of the, uh, of the reason why we're doing this. Um, and the, the other feedback we got from vendors is also that they said, uh, please do not include this IDS check because it doesn't make sense if Bill Smart does an IDS check, but it's something you need to leave to the market. The, the vendors uh, need to compete on that. It doesn't make any sense for Bill Smart to build a system like that. It doesn't have to be the authoritative system on IDS checks, it needs to be an authoritative system on IFC validation. That's the feedback we've got so far, but that's obviously limited feedback from half a dozen vendors. Uh, I'd like to hear from you guys as well. Oh, uh, you're getting my response as a HOK person, not a building smart person. I would want to do them both at the same time. Why would I want to go to two tools? 
like I got a file, uh, the information I need is there, and it's a valid file. Seems like a extension of the same process from an end user perspective. Yeah, I think that's great. I, I don't like, I mean, generally, I don't like using open standards as a competitive advantage anyway, right? That's against the concept of the open standard, so. But for you, I think eventually the vendors will probably integrate the validation service into their tools. It's fine. Then they can do both too. Everyone can do their own IDS check in their own tool. You know, be careful <clears throat> because, like, that, that means that the vendors would have something in their tool doing the validation. That probably is versioned, and everybody's going to have some different version of validation. That's that right. So that's why having a service online that does it for you, I think it's a centralized point. Um, it sounds more ideal. Yeah, yeah, when I mean integrated, I think. Mean, API based <coughs> from some factors. See, I, I, I see it more integrated in CDEs where people upload files and then after uploading the background is being checked to you, you have access to the reports from the CD, not necessarily in the form of the Do you think the market is there that people throwing their, their private <laughs> IRC files <laughs> down on public? That's a concern. What was it? customers are looking at? And Leon, you know, I mean, one of the one of the things that's going to block the service is I'd love to be able to check internal files that I get from customers, but I can't see that, right? Yeah. yeah so that I mean, we're we're deviating a little bit, <laughs> but that's the reason why uh, <coughs> vendors can also run this in WebAssembly, so just locally, so if the files are not being sent to an external server. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, if you yeah, if you have. That files that you don't share, but you still want to check them, you can just run this locally in WebAssembly. We're still we're still not sure if we would then also share the reports to the sample database because we want to have these reports for the metrics. Um, but this is also yeah, from from the start. We uh, we identified this problem, so when you look at the terms of services and a privacy statements, there's a there's a lot of reasons why. Uh, People would be allowed to upload files there, um, but it's you can also run it in WebAssembly for vendors that just want to run it for them. Again, I don't want to express too much, but I could absolutely imagine. Uh, okay, I'm willing to give you the report or the errors, right? Pop in without giving you the data. Mm -hmm. I'll give you that much data, right? I'll give you, so that you can track. Things, but yeah, I agree with the sentiments here. People aren't gonna put their prison data IC file. Um, you know. yeah, but if you if you follow that logically forward a little bit, there's all the design decisions you can make. You could say, well, maybe building smart will supply an application that is somehow assigned to kind of change mm -hmm. um, that can run on your data and then verify the data. Well, but how do I know that this is verified data? Well, maybe they can sign the data. While they verify it, you now I have a basically a, a small part at the bottom of my file saying, "Hey, by the way, it's signed by Building Smart with this version of the application with these IDS set of files." And something like that. Yeah. It's possible, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Sign my IDS file. Sure. Yeah. Functional line. Functional lines that you're a little soft. If you could speak up a little bit more. Voice or something. In there were comments about you reclining on the sofa, but I, I won't repeat those. <laughs> so I just want to stress the fact that we are trying to solve, again, we are trying to answer the demand of solving the scenario of people blaming each other for wrong files or wrong software. That's why the t shirt for the workshop of today is stop the blame game. That's kind of a tagline of a validation service so far. Maybe we can find a better one in the future, but it's pretty it's pretty to the point at the moment. I feel like there's a presentation in the future where you only have t shirts as a slogan. Well, it was not clear to the people at home, but yeah, it's a good one. Too bad you can't hear, you can't be here. Um, another out of scope part is visualization. 
So for multiple reasons, um, validation service does not do visualization profile. Some examples, many errors are invisible in a viewer. Think about the unclosed parentheses, how you can display an unclosed parentheses error. Or more in depth, some errors are on the geometrical side and visualize would imply correct. So we can't visualize it, it's wrong. So visualization is also out of scope. Yes, sir. I'll just re, re, uh, re register my belief that showing me where the error is with a, a point on something using a visualizer would be helpful, even if you can't show the geometry. So I, I understand the, you have to explain what, what you're seeing is not validated, but I can show you it is the two different things, but it, that assumes that the user has a way to go back to the source application and change that somehow and fix it. Whereas I think what we're checking here is more like the, the file structure itself. So the question really is like, how could the user cause this problem anyway? Well, I could have, I mean, meaning what, what, basically what I'm saying is I'm an end user. I can't easily communicate. I mean, I'm, I think BCFs are part of this. I uh, can't remember if they are, but I can, I, I, I want to communicate because I've checked it. Maybe the vendor didn't check it, right? So someone gives me a file, I check it because it isn't working. Sure. I want to communicate to someone what it is. I can give it like end users don't know IDs, but I can show you a picture. So that's, that's my sort of conjecture is it's this one. It's highlighted red for me. If it's a, if it's an item, it's not a deal breaker, but it's a, it's an artificial line, but I know why it's there. Okay. I understand. Let's see what we provide to the users now and, and how many of those errors could potentially <coughs> be enriched with a visual part of the right? Yeah, there's a few questions online that they can address. Visualization service open to the public? Yes. By date of building smart You can even try it yourself right now. And the other one is? Will BCF get involved with the validation service somehow? Don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think it does a really solve the problem because you have to have a BCF tool at the ready to to use the data and it doesn't communicate like a large number of the things you'd be checking. Dot, you know, data structure and stuff like that. So it's a good idea, but at the same time, it falls in the category of the visualization. Like you forgot a comma. Yeah. Okay, and then it's people fighting over the validation. Okay. Um, okay, so visually, you stress the good point made by uh, Ron. When I receive a file validation service, check the syntax, schema, other rules on top of the standard. Keep in mind these rules are functions to the schema versions and functions to the MVDs or implementation cycles. So not every version, not every MVD has the same rule. Um, it's also checking the STD. It's a different college because we said it's a somehow project specific. So the SAD information might be organization specific and project specific, and then objects, properties, and materials. So anything that is usually referred to as exchange requirements is out of scope. So validation service, info, IDS, BSD. Does it make sense? You see the SDD validation service is kind of the edge because it's in scope of the current validation service, but it's actually indirectly is a project oriented. Can you, can you give me an example of what would be a validation of a BSDD value? Yeah. 
Well, yeah. So yesterday we made an example <coughs> of uh, dash classification system in NSFP for classifying uh, uh, building elements. And there is one classification that is 21, 22. It's a uh, outer external wall, low bearing external wall. And in BSV, this uh, classification comes with a property, is low, is low bearing, with a predefined uh, value of uh, true. Uh, if validation service gets an IFC file where walls are classified using this classification, pointing to BSV, and the property is load bearing is full, it triggers an error. Okay. <coughs> an error or warning? An error. Um, well, it says required uh, through, observe false. It's up to you to decide. If it's an error, if it's a warning. At the moment, it's just a comparison, and we, we highlight it in red. <coughs> Uh, yeah, and there's more. Uh, it can help you checking your, the quality of your implementation. This is a consequence of uh, being able to validate files uh, against syntax and schema and these further rules. It has a crucial role in the software certification strategy of Google Smart. I think Liam can also uh, spend a couple of words about that. And you can run it locally. No need to upload files. We'll see the workshop in, in a minute. And then, since it's growing fast and it needs and it's inside uh, in its beta version at the moment. Uh, we are really keen to hear your feedbacks, and that's why that's why we have this second workshop right after Jones, uh, where we're going to send up, uh, create a couple of sticky notes, must have features, nice to have features. Uh, uh, yeah, I look at that. <coughs> that was it about the introduction. So, questions before we go into the workshop. I won't take time for the workshop. So if there are burning questions, just go ahead. Otherwise, we can just ask them. We're going to park them here, and we're going to answer them later after the workshop. And I'm, I'm interested in versioning and, and how this is going to change in the future. Like, what if I had a valid file, and now you change the validation, and then you can be unvalid? How does that work, et cetera? Yes. Yeah, very good. Yeah, plus one of the kind of the least cycle. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> okay. Good one. It's not a quick one, so I'm keeping that for later. Another, another topic is um, given that end users can use it, um, but you're not validating everything. File can be invalid and get a uh, verification check mark, right? Like some geometry thing. The geometry is garbage. Uh, so I think there needs to be some care taken to how do we, how do we, Still push back and say, yes, I know that this has validation, but you know, the geometry is five million miles wide. Yeah, you should be right? very careful with, with, with the messaging of this because like a valid file does not imply a valid model. Right, right. Then, right. There needs to be some sort of scoping, some sort of here's, you know, you clear to the user. This does not cover from the user, you know, in clear language for the user, as opposed to I no longer need the civil engineer to stamp this. It just validates it for me. I also wonder if there's recognized practices. For example, someone produced a IC file with huge amounts of matches, which is a fascinating example. And explode the file size. No editors can even open the text file. It's, it's illegal, but it's not recommended. So the question is what is the recommended way? Very good point. So, quickly on that, because it's not the first time that we hear that. At the moment, we, we say this is passed, this is failing. We also have some cases in which we cannot say anything, like I couldn't check because I didn't find the entity that I was supposed to find uh, for this rule. So it's not wrong, it simply doesn't apply. And yes, we also had suggestions to explore these uh, good practices or recommendations like I found an IFC for the tree file with a lot of IFC coming out in proxy. 
if it was 2x3, I can understand that, but now it's 4 3 so good practice is if it's the latest standard, please try to consider your option. Very good point. Yes. But that, that kind of thing, it opens it up, and it's probably a good thing from non implementer agreement suggestions. And yeah, it, you mean from, from the community, from the end users. Right. Like, don't export an IFC file uh, five miles from an origin because no CAD system will use this file. Like that's not a, but it, but we don't yeah. we don't have a process to make these uh, proposals at least. Yesterday we also talked about these uh, sensible defaults. With this validation service, you can check the sensible defaults and give a warning. But if we get a lot of files, we can also get get user feedback on what they think is a sensible default. So even if you get a warning that it's not a sensible default given to the current standards, we might use that knowledge also to um, yeah, to amend the standards. And I think the same goes for these kind of examples with just too many tessellated triangles and geometry origin points that are off. The more data you get, the more we can learn from the data that we get. And and can further extend the rules and recommendations of the service. Is there any the formal validation and version discussion aside? Is there these are Gherkin and Pickle? No. There's so there's one set of there's some of this is in Python and some of it's in this a good question. <clears throat> Uh, validation service is using IPC open shell to parse and, and refine and validate them. So syntax and schema are checked using uh, the functionality of uh, IPC open shell. So for me, Python is an extension of IPC open shell. Uh, while these rules are at the moment written using the Gherkin technology. So yeah, the uh, Python implementation of VA. Uh, using the even when band piping, and we are experimenting with that. We are already discovering that for some rules, these paradigma might be a little bit of a constraint. So we might want to look into a different one. At the moment, those rules, the number three, are checked using the gear uh, technology. There's always a, a plain language correspondence to the rules. We will see some examples. Yeah. Okay. Can I hand over to you? So, Pedro, do I? I'm going to. Uh, I'm trying to. You want to come here, maybe, please, and just think about if you talk to the board, then I'm probably going to be here. The goal of this workshop is to show you how to run the validation service in your own machine, so being able to check your own files. And uh, you can also participate to the development process and see how the registers work. So, the outline is the following. First, I will give you a tour of the repository I'm using. Then, I will present you the tech stack. I will then show you the difference between the development and production environments, followed by the workflow. And uh, finally, I will show you the core of the structure, uh, how to run the validation service, how to install it. Uh, there is hundreds of ways that you can fail in slides, so don't worry if it doesn't work on your machine, uh, you will be able to follow along with the presentation. And finally, I will show you how to adapt the validation service by using your own set of tools. So, how it works, we 
have a development repository, which is this one, where we have uh, the backend, which is in this uh, application for there. <coughs> and all the checks are there. And in this uh, backend repository, we have uh, a get in groups, so module, and instead a parser, so module. The backend is written, it's a class application, it's a class API. And the front end is the React application. <coughs> With all the components in this uh, SFC folder. So, this is the development the repository on GitHub. So, when we develop, we uh, submit the request on this, and then we've got an urge. And then it is deployed into production. So it is transferred, transferred to this repository. This is the official repository. So what you see in this repository is what is uh, deployed in the official domain. So it's exactly the same, but developed the same. <coughs> yeah, so they're, they're, they're basically the same. This is just the official one. Yeah, it's yeah. the official. And I was looking about the so modules. So this is the module that is checking the syntax of IFC file. One of the, the first check that uh, check whether there is a simple one for the step syntax syntax that you can find. And there is a working repository where there are the rules and the content of this repository, the rules are there in this feature program. And here you can see some examples of it. And for the text stack, we're using in deployment, we're using Docker containers. So, each container is a service. We orchestrate everything with uh, Docker Compose. And uh, for the front end, we're using React. For the back end, uh, Task API. For orchestrating the task uh, in the back end, we're using Redis uh, For the step parser, we're using Dart in Python that uh, give us uh, nice error messages. Uh, for the rules, we're using the Cucumber syntax and uh, the Behead by the major. And this repository was built on top of uh, IFC uh, Python, which is uh, an IFC based repository. And we're using a server IFC and share it by the So the difference between our code and development environments. So for uh, the deployment, we're using hash files, so just Run some and you can see the, the application that uh, is executed. And for the production, as I was saying, Docker Composer. For the database, we're using production Postgres, and we have a local database on the running company. And for the job scheduling, uh, we're using the registry in production and the uh, Python uh, threads in, in Docker development. So the workflow of the application uh, works uh, internally. So let's say a user uploads some files in the front end. It sends a post request, request sorry, to the class API in the back end. And this task is enqueued in the task queue. One file equals one job. And then the tasks are executed sequentially in the workflow. And each task constitutes several items. So we have subtasks, include instruction tasks, syntax, check, schema check, DSDB check, and the rules. And the results of this task are stored in the database in our work workflow. And when the user is on his job or is clicking on the report, you can see the results from the database. So now I'm going to show you how to run this on the machine so you can try to follow. 
So what I did is I'm using the Conda environment. So I create this SD Conda environment on which I have uh, installed a <coughs> jet. And to do this, just I go into the site uh, packages a repository of uh, my virtual environment. Yep. Online, I ask if you speak up a little bit. Oh, okay, sorry. So here you can see uh, on the site packages folder the different packages on my on the environments. So I have server jelly there. And for this, you have to download it. So I already did it, but the link to put it in the chat. I'm not in the chat, so I'm going to follow. Uh, it's in the kernel link that you got for this one. Once you have the environment and it's a bunch of stuff, you can turn the development to this way. So I'm creating a folder, folder, and I'm turning the repository <coughs> with the stream modules. And the recursive flag in the command. Then if you run that this, uh, the NPM will know package, so no package. I will recommend to install that to help you to have both the API and the content. So you can install it with this one. And then you can install all the Python uh, packages. Okay, once you have this, <coughs> you can go to uh, the content repository, so do I, and run npm install. I'm kind of broad question in testing this. I, I went and grabbed the production version because I was like, you guys got a doctor in the front just run the computer. Um, so like would you recommend for beginners that you start with a dev environment that's manually installed or 
seems like it, I would need to have a few variables defined for it to kick off. So otherwise, if you're using the Docker, you just have to compose up the Okay, so now we have uh, everything set up, so we can run the command. We could start everything. So we're starting the test API and the React content. <clears throat> While you're doing that, is the PowerPoint already available so we can kind of copy paste from there? Or... Right. Yeah. Is it already? Yeah. Well, now we're supposed to type all that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Otherwise, then we have a folder that uh, they can access right away now, or I see three weeks. So it's going to be as a command line instead. You mean, or do you say that there is a My point is the, <laughs> oh, it is. you're having to start a yes, you can server do. and all that stuff, maybe no. you no. just run this command. Yeah, we can, we can, we can make the run the for um, testing. Right, right. Exactly. You can run the individual checks uh, within the registry. OK, thank you. The individual, you can run everything. Absolutely. You can, I can do, like, Run only the check JSDD, I can run the schema, I can run the syntax. Okay. It's what the worker is doing, it's calling some sub process and it's uh, executing this. So we could, we could set up our own yeah. Yeah. testing. Yeah, sure. We could take something great. That sounds cool. I think one of the next uh, steps is actually yes, it's, uh, demonstrating how you could create your own rule and add the, the further check on that. So, uh, this is what you see once you have uh, got some file and the checks have been executed. So when you click on the, the icons are clickable, if you click there, you can see some information about the file. Just check. Same for the, for the syntax and schema, for the rules, and for the PSD. So now I'm going to show you uh, how to change the validation service. So, for example, here we can see the rule results, the different rules that are used uh, by the, the checker. So you can see this GAN 111, and uh, there is. This one, or four, etc. So I'm going to show you uh, that you can uh, remove one of these rules and add it again. Let's go.
So I open it with my third editor. So in application checks, you see the get most modules. modules. And uh, there are some rules there. Those are the rules that are used by the check. So I was talking about this one, then one one, I could delete it. And I can even check. And normally they won't be displayed anymore in the results. So this is that how you group it? Like every rule has its own file? Yeah, exactly. So in this interface, is there any way for somebody to download the report or to have a format to supply a report to somebody else? Uh, for now, you can just print, easier to print the report. So this is the top feature. <coughs> okay, good. But here you, you're not seeing anymore this uh, gem 111 because I removed it from uh, the word type. And if I look back, I will see that it will be checked against this again. So let's show you that you can add your own rules, modify this, <coughs> and have different checks. So in the worker, that's where things happen. This is the subtask that is validating against the schema, the AFC schema. Yeah, this is the command that we are running. So we are running this IFC open shell validate. This is coming from IFC open shell. That's what I showed you at the beginning, like we installed the IFC open shell. And you can ask uh, JSON results. Uh, and different flags that are here adapted to the tool. But it shows that you can uh, run yourself the programs. Okay, wait. So the open shell has a validate feature that you're using. Uh, the IFC open shell Python package has a validate uh, program that can be run with mundane arguments that are local. So that's the actual validation check. That's yes. Right. For which file? For the schema. For which file? Yeah. For the GSDB, it's the same. You, you have a command line uh, application here, and you put your file. It is here that you to uh, the application, but you can uh, set the task to zero. This is something for our database. Uh, so yeah, you can run the checks individually. But what is it using there then? Also, um, IFC open shell? Uh, Mm, it is using AFC open shell uh, as a package. Yeah. As a package, okay. Like we're using the functions of AFC open shell. Okay. To do this with the check. There's IFC open shell, the entity and the tool. Okay. Are you mentioning that up for it? Uh, well, I mean, I bet that the features are the same between the two. It's just that you can call them different. Right? Is that right? Leo was just checking if it's clear the distinction between the IFC open shell entity inside the schema, the class, let's say, uh, and the IFC open shell tool. <laughs> the open source <laughs> application well, it's not clear to me. Yeah, okay. Okay, so there is, so when I say it, the validation service is based on IFC open shell, I meant, sorry, I meant the application, so the open source application, it's an open source implementation of IFC, and it's called yeah, sorry, the name. I see open shot. Can you run a command line validation just to show us how? Mm -hmm. So it sounds like a command line validation only uses open, <coughs> IFC open shell. Say again, sorry. If I wanted to run a command line validation, I could just use IFC open shell. 
or the schema part, I guess. Yeah. For the schema. Okay, so the schema and the syntax. Uh, no, the syntax is uh, no less than this in this uh, step five submit. Because it's partial the step syntax. It's using a log to organize error messages. Oh, I see. Okay. And it's uh, not using a signature. Running an individual check. It's really more of our approach to when we are checking part of the yeah, I'm, I'm trying to understand how this would, um, this would be called by applications that the interface with this, right? Yeah, I guess the whole API is touched with your Let's try to do something. But yeah, for now, this uh, is adapted to this one. This check is adapted to the database. It's, it's waiting for a task in order to save the results to the database. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's possible with some uh, tricks to do anything. To do so we've shown syntax. Shown uh, schema yeah. and you've shown BSDB. What about rules, the where rules and stuff like that? Are that? Is that anywhere? Yeah. The where rules are part of the schema, right? Okay, so that is the where rules. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, additional yeah. feature that we have extended the schema checker yeah. to do where rules and functions. Rules like the one on the geometry, the one on uh, the alignments and spatial structure, the one that are we are looking to extend actually. Yeah. Uh, those are another thing that uh, Joanne is going to show. It's using the PRP uh, part. It's, we are leveraging on some parametric fiber steps to compose different types of checks. So probably it's nice also to see a joint the comparison between the, the feature file. Yeah. Pick a pick an easy one, please. And the <laughs> uh, and the Python grammar that we are reusing because even a Python grammar that we are continue continue to improve it, we can build many uh, feature files, many rules, leveraging on the same grammar. Of course, there is an effort on the parameterization of that um, because yes, we want to reuse it as much as possible. Um, okay, so this is a, a feature file where you can see in the human readable language uh, some. Thanks to some requirements on your file. Uh, okay. Maybe pick Except. one with a with a lot of parameters like the IFC entity, the number. You know, is there, there is anyone that you can check? With a lot of parameters like the entities and the like this. Constraint on the presentation. Yeah, yeah. And if you go to the steps now, you need to just come for F and the values. So when you read, when oh. and I see something, it has or must have all the instances of, mm -hmm. so all the names that we find are parameters in this uh, step, in this Python step. So we can build more rules reusing the same grammar, just changing the parameters. Step. No, I don't think that works. You have to have given and then you call for all the given. Oh, all the given. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, given an entity, something, all instances of this type, right? Mm -hmm. So, this is the given part. Yeah, here you can see the, the different fragments of uh, those uh, rules in natural language. So the given part, the condition, 
and uh, then the requirement. So you see that it's really parametric. You just have to fill this, and it's reusable across our rules. So there are some rules that could be easily extended simply by changing or adding a feature file without touching the file of the application. For some other rules, the grammar is not enough, and we need to extend Python grammar to allow further semantics. And on the rules here, I don't know if it was mentioned. So it seems like there's a sub repository called IFC Gherkin rules. And this repository, this code base <laughs> seems to be the core of where the rules are exactly. set up. Yeah. And this, this little part of the service seems to be stateless. Is that right? It has no back end orchestration. It's just calling it, pulling in data. Running a bunch of rules and spitting it out. Yeah. yeah, you can also run it locally if you want. You can also clone it and then so run like, a behave module. I don't know if this is what where Angel was going, but the fact that this is uh, like a stateless part that we can kind of check and run independently is mm -hmm. really useful. And then I see kind of there's a whole application that has does stateful orchestration, which you need to do. But I'm just I'm curious, would it be possible to have the other parts of this? Like, is the BSDP part could is there a, is that also stateless? Or does that require? I actually work on it at the moment okay. to uh, have it separately, so you can run it as a locally. Because you can that way you could scale out each of these things, and maybe maybe we want to do our own orchestration of these different things. I mean, it's good to have a reference implementation, but are each of the validation pieces, BSDB, the Gherkin feature, or if each of those were stateless modules, we can spin those up in our own environments. And, Ah, that's okay. yeah. That's right. You can do that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. You can use it offline, but yeah, BSDD is making some API calls. Yeah. but it's not store. It's not storing any sessions state. It's only at the like. It's only at the top level where currently it is. But uh, but Gert is where that's where you guys are going. Okay. Yeah. There's an open pull request too. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the good thing is that this is recorded, so <laughs> we got lots of certain points recording it and trying to pull it up. And we will also share the PowerPoint again. <laughs> right then, we will also share the slides. I can do that. Yeah. Is there anyone stuck, by the way, with setting I it up? I didn't even get to be here. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I never got to the meeting at the time. <laughs> Okay, okay, thank you. So I just want to clarify a couple of things because I saw some questions in the chat. Before we go into the workshop. Um, so first, this is an example of what I was requested before. Uh, formal proposition. So here I'm in the documentation of IFC composite curve, which is this one intentionally, because this is the one that has an issue in the schema. Um, there are in the documentation formal propositions written in this way. So there is a name, a description in plain language, and then there is the express uh, rule here. But if you look at the express fragment coming from the express schema, you will find that these were rules are also here. So the documentation is simply yeah, reproposing them with some more context. So formal propositions equal where rules embedded in this case in each entity. Of the scheme. Informal propositions are text. You alluded to earlier, you, you guys felt like you were, was it, you were starting to hit the limits of there were certain roles that kind of Gherkin was just becoming painful or something? Yeah, let's say that there is a, probably an implicit limit in these 
even when that part is not. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you need to work in a, let's say, network structure kind of, yeah. and this hierarchical thing is it's not the best the best way to do. It. So we're still experimenting. So at the moment, the, the exercise that we did is that we took these in, in formal propositions, again, plain text, these implementers agreement, again, plain text, um, some concept templates, which are, is a bad name for optimal entities that you should use for meaningful concepts. So I understand that you wanted to squeeze it. Uh, so inside of the documentation, we have these concept templates, like how to put entities together to form an aligned concept. Uh, but the, the template, the diagram is not enough. We, we need further semantics. Whenever there are two entities related in the diagram, what is it? Only one, just one, exactly one, one or two. So um, we are trying to see how much of these we can cover. <coughs> Sometimes it's full choice. So like with an example of that, you like a, like a closed loop where you've got to make sure all the all points are Forming a this specific one actually we have it right. So I think it, we have a, the the polyline. The last point of the polyline should be reference and not, not the same of the the first one. This one we had it in here, so we managed to do that. Okay. So let me show you some some example of the records also displaying these kind of errors. So if you log into the validate of doing smart.org you will probably see something like this. Uh, what what you saw from Joanne was already the new interface with the syntax and schema uh, put together. So this is already this is the production version. This is the public one. Just for the purpose of this meeting, we disabled the firewall on, on the uh, say development one, the testing one. So if you want to try. I'm going to do something very risky by like copy pasting the link in the chat. Making sure that we re enable the firewall at the end. Um, but just to give you an idea that we are continuously working also on the user interface, we really need your features. That's why we uh, feature request art. That's why we have this workshop right now. A um, few examples. So, syntax and scheme. I'm using the, the, the new interface, but it's, it's the same if, if I was using the old one. So syntax and schema. In this case, the syntax is fine. The schema has uh, three errors that in this case we decided to group. We're also experimenting grouping errors for the sake of visualization. Um, in this case, it's an IFC index polycore with a not to be three instances, instances of the same entity, which are lacking uh, a mandatory attribute. Another example, a predefined type that was not part of the schema. So in this case, there is an IFC course. It's a new entity in IFC for the tree. It has a predefined type with a set list of uh, entities like armor, ballast, pet core, filter, and not defined. And somehow the file has array as a, as a predefined type. This is obviously a mistake. Um, another schema error. Oh, this one is nice. This is one is, is actually the one that the validation service uh, found uh, an issue in the schema. So in this case, this was related to the alignment. So uh, it's probably too complicated. But in the schema, other than wearables, there are functions that are checking again, uh, entities inside a schema. There was a function that was checking the allowed curves. And when we extended the schema in MC for free with spirals and flow rates and so on, we forgot to amend the function to say these are also valid curves. So it happened that we implemented werewolf and functions like this one, and we got files from the rail people with this type of curve, and they trigger an error. So in this case, the file was, was a wrong, false error. The file was right, the validation service didn't have a bug, it actually was right, the problem was in the schema, and now we're fixing that. Another example. So this was syntax and schema. I'm showing you the record because I was I would like also to get feedback on the way we display errors and uh, we group errors and so on. So rules. 
I think this is one that we were discussing before. Uh, uh, this is the no duplicate points within a polyloop or polyline. This is an implementer agreement. Informal propositions. Um, in IFC, representation identifiers and representation types should be selected from a list of fixed values. It's not an enumeration, it's just documentation, sadly. So if you look into the uh, IFC shape representation entity in the documentation, you will find a table telling you which type and identifier you need to use. So there's nothing really enforcing people like in the schema to use a specific uh, type. So in this case, they were using plan. And this is not part of that table. So again, the level of the normative, how normative they should be is debatable, but if it's part of the documentation, it is normative, it's part of the specification. Yeah, that file is completely wrong. Uh, let me just see if I get an example of the BSTD one. Just as we mentioned before. BSTD. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, it was a instance of a window. We require it to be a window. We assert it to be a window with a given property set, with a given property, it's beautiful, with a given value, boolean, and a given uh, expected, sorry, with a given value type and with an expected value, the value was supposed to be true, we found false and we trigger a warning. So this is an example of a VSDB check. So, do we have to have the workshop now or after coffee? Can we, can we do the Mentimeter now? We have some validation service questions in there. Now that you have the background, I think it's a good idea. And then we do the workshop later after the coffee. And then we do coffee and then okay. Yeah, okay. Can I launch the Mentimeter or do you need to join? Yeah, there's the QR code is in the SharePoint folder. You're, you're going to change this slide, right? Yeah, if you go there with that code on your laptop, you can use your screen share. Good point. The picture? Come on, data interoperability. <clears throat> no, it's a picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked, though. What is it? 7, 9, 3, 4, 5, 0, 3, 6. Come on, it's the second day, you should know the heart. You're not going to answer? <laughs> <laughs> Never wonder. Now you're now you're just being the observer, not the. Yeah, <laughs> that's the. Yeah, when you should make you get the results. Mm. No. Oh. No. That's, that's, ah. Technology, right? Yeah, I, I can't. You, you can point. just join the poll and share the screen. <clears throat> Yeah, but I uh, I joined the call as an observer, not as a host. I can quickly change that.
so most most people have heard of it. Next one. Last one is to pardon me. <laughs> I'm allergic to you guys. Does it have any financial implications if I, if I slide it? <laughs> <laughs> Not for you. <laughs> oh. Information in the next page. <laughs> the next page is how much? Yeah, that was like a hidden uh, donate, like a donate <laughs> button. No, it just asked, should you get more funding? It didn't say where you yeah. should get that funding from. There's a link of build funding. <laughs> Kickstarter. Interestingly, <Yeah. laughs> quite some people who want an IPS check there as well. How many, how many responses do we have? Can you see that? 14. It's in the corner. 17. How many slides? Yeah. Oh, yeah, done that. It's not statistically significant. No, no. 17. 17, there you go. Hmm. Interesting results, actually. Yeah. What surprises you? Uh, the first one and uh, the third one, very basic for software certification. I mean, did you go to the horrible basis for software certification? And then, Sorry? What, what did you expect? It's a uh, I, accept, right? I expected at least one to strongly disagree. Oh, okay. okay. I agree with this for sure. I will change my attitude. Yeah. <laughs> I expect nobody disagreed with the uh, spread out, but for some first it's mainly oh. in the middle and to the right. But for the IBS check, I see that there's a lot that also answered five. Yeah. That's interesting. It's interesting, uh, yeah. Interesting to see. If, I mean, you can imagine that there's a lot of end users who just want to have it because there's not a lot of other others available at this point. On that first one, like as a, coming back to the point from before, what is, my my preference would be that the each of these pieces be potentially independently adoptable or deployable, especially if they can be stateless. As a, um, because there, it seems like I'm assuming there will be people who just want the whole kit and caboodle in one nice UI that's centrally available. But if we did want to start running this internally for checks, it's it's really practical to be able to have these pieces we can deploy on different infrastructure potentially run. With different orchestration, is that does that resonate with anybody else, even from a better implementer perspective, or does having this as kind of a single, I'll call it a monolithic service, you know, that's baking all this stuff in? Nobody that I know of, a facility engineer, would supply a file that you didn't check yourself. Yep, that's that's what I think the need is here. But for, for us as vendors adopting adopting this even internally, would you how how do you feel about having kind of the whole service, including all of the orchestration and deployment, being the only option versus being able to take pieces of this and as a as a new developer, I might be interested in pieces. Mm -hmm. As a developer who thinks he has a working X implementation, I think all or nothing is perfectly fine. Put it, put it I, don't don't expect, I don't expect I don't expect it to fail. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm not checking every day I'm working on level 17. <clears throat> I guess I mean like more more like the way it's broken up now, where you can test the where rules separate from the 
via seeking validation, not an individual build chip. There's there's two target groups here, right? One is the, the stakeholders, the users, if you will, mm -hmm. and then there's the developers, right? Yeah. Uh, this is a development tool is great mm -hmm. because you can verify your exporter work. Yeah. You only need that during development. Yeah. But I would, I would we we batch export IC, so I would want a library I can put to run a yes against and maybe certain checks. So if the if the errors can originate outside uh, of the application itself, then yes. Uh, but if if it's just the application you're checking, then it stays the same throughout that batch process. Well, people people do dumb things though. Well, see that's the thing. If so if I'm 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 uh, people that people in my company produce IFC files, they could somehow do something that makes an invalid IFC file in software. Right. Uh, and we we've probably run across exactly these things that have caused exports to fail historically. Um, so I mean, I would I wouldn't necessarily care about the schema validation. I would care about other things in exactly the way you describe it. I mean, I wouldn't want an end user have to look at these things. Yeah, that's that's a that's a good point. So we say this is also, I mean, can be a developer's tool, can be an end user's tool. But for most of what this tool is doing at the moment, for most of the end users, it's a given. It's transparent. They don't they don't get schemas and that's this kind of stuff. For them, it has to be right. I have to be able to open a file. <coughs> I can't be bothered. It's a schema or a syntax error. So for them, it's a given. But I understand for software is for software implementers is it's crucial. Well, but the, the, you have to imagine in a company, a larger company of any scale, you don't let end users test this stuff. We put we have people that test it for them. <clears throat> that so we would want to get in the get in between this yeah. process and do half of the things that the software developers are doing while while people work. We don't like it's the worst kind of automation that people have to watch, right? Like go to the website and watch it work is not something you'd want end users to have to do to validate a file. So we would <clears throat> look to deploy it. But here's the problem though, they won't they won't trust the software, right? They would like to have the external organization or building smart. Well no, but so we have the same problem, like the actual act of going to your web page and dropping a file in might give them more security than us calling an API and giving oh. that result. Oh no, no. So basically what I'm getting at is like we have the same problems you might have is we could produce junk data. Some of that is sort of <coughs> instance data, the properties and stuff like that, but to some is like what they model. And we would want to continually check it uh, while people work. And then when we have to deliver it, we would like a formal system, we could, oh, oh, we checked it, but we don't want to <clears throat> wait to the end to check it. Just like software developers don't want to, like, not check your work while you're working. Okay, I, I guess I understand. Well, here, here are the primary workflow that's right, So workflow number one is, as a developer, for every single test I have, or for a large subset of the tests, I throw an internal validation check at the end as part of the test. Right, so every, thousands of times a day. Right, so obviously I'm not going to go to the web service. I want to look. Uh, that's number one. Number two, I'm a user. I can't load my file in. I just want to know this is bad or this is good. Right, and again with the caveat we said earlier, where this is good doesn't actually mean it's good. It just means it's not bad in these ways. <clears throat> and I can imagine, right? Like I would trust Building Smart over Autodesk tool says that this Autodesk file is fine, right? Sure it does, right? So I trust the server. And I could even imagine UX around, hey, I this file is bad. I've detected that it was created in Revit. Do you wanna, you know, con you know, do you want us to help you contact their support? Right? And maybe we kind of collaborate with you so that we have some way of saying, okay, now we just got a file that's reported <laughs> through the validation service. That's an interesting kind of User experience. That's a scary that vendor experience, though, isn't it? Like, what if it's well, all user error? <laughs> you're going to have a lot of issues. Well, you're going to get it anyway. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm I'm going to I'm going to get that file to support. Sure. We are. Right. Well, one of the advantages of collecting this information, is it, as soon as they get statistically significant, if a vendor. Uh, if a certain tool of a certain version is consistently doing 
not well on a certain topic, like georeferencing. Mm -hmm. Might be many issues, like end user not able to set up their school correctly, and it could also be, or something wrong on the implementation. Either way, you can fit back to the vendor saying, either <coughs> improve your documentation because your users are failing to set up your tool, or uh, probably there's something off in their implementation. Right. And those are the value added, right? The value added we talked about before is okay, now this file is validated, that's stamped, you know. And then the other one being, um, yeah, maybe there would be a way for us to monitor here's your report on that check log or whatever. So uh, there's a third, I think you had two, right? There's a third use case, which like I, I'm not trying to check Revit, I'm trying to check people using Revit or people using ARCHICAD. Mm -hmm. And I want to do that every day because I know to get a valid uh, georeferencing, they have to provide a ESG code. I don't want to wait to the end of the problem process uh, as like while people work, I want to be able to just check it while they work. And they don't have to tell them about it. I mean, we, we try to automate the hell out of everything people do. So they don't, Watch a files export. We automate that. Why this, would you? this use case sounds more like the IDS use case, where yeah. you check if the information is in there, not check if the files. Well, but people can, any software here will allow people to put really gross meshes in files that you can export. If, if we add sensible uh, Default. defaults. There's only certain people in a project that are allowed to take the file to different organizations. Um, I don't know, man, but I'm so it's well, no, that's not true. that is going to be well, no, that's why I'm, I'm I have a developer use case, not a hosted use case. Okay, so yeah, it's okay. You're going to have your own, you're going to take this internally, you're going to, you're going to yeah. that, right? Yeah, good point. In Boston, someone said, I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of years, consultants will start developing. Actually, specific rules on top of this. Right. Yeah, so it's, it's available. It's modular. You can expand it. That's an API now. So the backend is loose in the front end. You can use the backend for your own customization. All right, we're on the topic of uploading or not uploading. Then the next question. It's only 14, already 14. That's still a couple missing. You can vote twice on this. Yeah, you, you have to have multiple options okay. to vote for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so even if then you have multiple options. Still my favorite one. I don't like dark I don't work zero. I don't like dark patterns where people have to default out of bad behavior. Hmm. Well, the pink one means that they have to know to collect check delete oh people aren't that and to your we don't have nearly control you you seem to think like everybody on a project team could upload a file to a service like this sure so i don't want them to be dumb enough or dumb enough to not check no yeah so so yeah when you start handling sensitive data and you become the organization to handle or check that there's a lot of uh, interesting requirements to come up. Yeah. Just context uh, why we're asking this question because normally it would be it would be a no brainer. We just say you you either run it locally or when you upload it, we delete the files immediately. But uh, like I said before, we have this idea of analyzing the files, not just to report on on something that is related to software certification, but also to analyze them to improve IFC in the future. <coughs> so for that, it is it is in our interest to to be able to analyze those files to, to at least have some kind of information about them. If they are ready to use this thing, then we already have that. That's okay. already a okay. yeah. 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 What's the first thing that we did? Yeah. 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 At least from my perspective, none of our, this wouldn't satisfy a support use case for giving access to this sort of data under our typical NDAs we see on projects. So we we couldn't use that option because it there's a 
a normative world where you can provide files if you need support in a, but this is not support. Yeah, things like FedRAMP and all that. Well, to make well, it possible. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Every, yeah. every, <laughs> every pub private client has an NDA that says you can't do this either. I mean, Yeah, so the question really is like, how often would this fit into a, a project? <clears throat> yeah, the question is how can we make this compliance? So there is a lot of. But I think end I'll have it. I'll have it right. Like, submit the submit the errors, not the content. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. There is this future roadmap where we would like to analyze the content anonymized. We, I mean, we won't give anybody access to our content. Sorry? Uh, we don't, we don't like, we, we're not comfortable giving anybody access to our content for data analysis. Right. So yeah, I mean, look, we have to start. every major vendor has this problem. Yeah. We used to have uh, a pseudo regression retrieval test, right? So we would run customer files, just make sure that, you know, the Revit 8 file still works. We haven't been able to do that for a number of years because of GDPR, right? So that's, that's not, right? But people have to opt in to give you data. Now, you can do that. You can say, as an opt-in, right, which is the, the right direction. I opt in to give you, you can use this as you wish because this is just throwaway data, or you can collect very specific metrics which are listed here, right? I will get a count of your entities. I will get the length of your file and I will, whatever. You, and you and you allow me to use this once or forever. Then and and you still have the option to delete later if you change your mind. Like again, GDPR, right? Yeah. So, but you have to be really careful. Yeah. And you do your own dashboard validation service, which you can check your own files which you upload. So I can use the only option to modify the rights of the file or delete it or. <laughs> yeah, any other question? You mentioned the word coffee already, so uh, <laughs> I don't want to keep you from that. Coffee and then we will do Well, I think there's two more slides on validation service, so let's wrap right. that up and then. Ordering thing. Sorry? Yeah, ordering things. Ordering, yeah. I thought <laughs> I challenged you a bit. Come on. That's good. Yeah. What does check full IFC spec mean? Schema plus specification. It's just a schema check. Prioritize it as what you find most important or what yeah. is most grievously problematic or no no what what we should invest in if we get those additional funds somewhere <laughs> from generating <Yeah. laughs> President Nisha Lincoln from these willing participants in the room yeah. Yeah. <laughs> give me a domain rule yeah the domain um, do you have a nice one for real Domain. Yeah, these are the perfect rules. Domain rules. Domain rules. Yes, I mean, some of the rules are suggested by domain experts, meaning the alignment compliance cannot come from building. So we are using their knowledge to build domain specific rules, but these rules apply to the entire ANSI standard. That's the caveat. So they cannot come up with a domain specific rules that applies only to Italian. Railway network. This cannot end up in these validation service because we'll trigger an error on French files, which are wrong, simply not Italian. <laughs> there was, I think there was this example where you check an alignment if it makes sense, because you can also make an alignment that doesn't make sense but still is compliant to the schema. <clears throat> That's the one that Peter makes. Each actually alignment must be nested by exactly one instance of. I see a language version too. You're talking about curves, different curves. Yes, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> in Italy it's not, oh, on the 
yeah, in Italy you cannot do vertical profiles using uh, parabolas. You have to use straight line or uh, arcs. In some other country, it's allowed. In some other, in Italy, it's allowed for road and not for rail. So road road designers can use parabolas in their vertical profiles. Railway designer cannot. Yeah, it probably it's like a, a second or third derivative as a to jump in it or something for rail. And kind of yeah. But so this wouldn't make it a way in here because it's an Italian requirement, not a global requirement. Yeah. I mean, you cannot trigger error on French files. Because <laughs> they're French. <laughs> really, it's a it's local. Really. It's, it, yeah, it's local in this case. Yeah. It's in local. that case, it is. So, uh, that's not how I read it. So I might. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting news. Mm -hmm. You put food in it. <laughs> you know, that, that's, that was expected, but checking sensible defaults, that's that's basically about the instantiation of the concept templates, so that that's higher than the actual concept templates. Be interesting. I don't think I understood the word concept template. Uh, yeah, that's... That's also very common. It's not. Yeah. It hasn't come up yet. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I can't make an example for coffee. Yeah, I, 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 we're, we're at 17 again. That seems to be the magic number, so let's move on to the next one. Ranking again. Well, for this one, we also have the workshop. So if you don't find your fe your favorite feature here, you can keep it for the workshop. So let's do import checking. Yeah, yeah imports. So now we're basically only checking exports from software tools. So I see export from software tools is being checked. Mm -hmm. And there's the idea to also, because this is basically, uh, we see this a little bit as a crowdsourcing software certification. We gather a lot of reports and a lot of results from IFC exports. And it would be nice to do that from imports as well, where you just ask a user to import the default file, check if what they see after import is correct inside the authoring tool, um, fill out a questionnaire, what is correct, what is incorrect, Basically, having the end users and the community follow a step by step guide to check their tools if they import files correctly. I don't trust people that way. I, it would, I would require a, like, is the area of the surface the same? Is the. Yeah, it's, I think it's the same as what we do now. And eventually, you would have metrics that filter out wrong user user errors and have a lot of data to uh, provide some kind of a statistically uh, confident results. In the, in the railway project, they are building tests, instructions, and they're made of formal rules. This is part of the implementation form this afternoon, but they are building formal rules and they are just referencing to the validation service, like when you're submitting a file for this test, <coughs> these rules of the validation service needs to be great. And then they have informal rules and control parameters for this reason. So control parameters is the X, Y, Z uh, coordinate of the last point of the alignment has to be this, this, and that. Okay, this is not data inside MC5, it needs to be calculated, but you can have it as a control parameter <coughs> and they can provide a screenshot of their last point, which is actually matching these control parameters. And they have also had this informal, uh, informal criteria in which they say uh, my, the application should be able to uh, retrieve the number of curse, courses uh, in the, on the railway track, and they know that they are 45. And the vendors need to provide a screenshot in which they show that they are 45. OK, so this, this wouldn't, though, make any sense to give to a real end user. It makes sense to give to a vendor. Here's a 
here's a set of unit tests, give us screenshots. But like coordinates, like somebody set their file wrong and they have a coordinate system that's different than the import one and oh, it's in the wrong spot. Like all these things you can go wrong. But like, cause why would you, why would you have users, end users do those tests versus the software developers themselves? I mean, technically you could maybe do a round trip test. I was going to say, it's random. Oh, look at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the ones for uh, service. Okay. Coffee. Good. Be back at. Yeah, round trip is a red herring in this group. Don't go there. Why is that? Yeah, let's, let's talk about it over coffee. Oh, God. Be back in 10, 15, 10. Oh, my. Uh, yeah. So next up is a workshop, quick one, and then we go into the implementer forum part. Let's see how deep we're gonna dive in that because I don't uh, I don't see any IFC for the three implementers. Really interested in seeing the discussions that we're having in the forum every Thursday. <laughs> and I don't want to I don't want to bore you to that. So. Um, let's see that. But first, let's do something. Let's try to do something interactive. So the idea is that you've seen a little bit of the validation service, at least the high level. You've seen the reports. You understood the scope, more or less. Um, the idea now is that you form groups of two people, just pick one, and for two minutes you discuss about um, features, and you come up with. A must, one must have feature and two nice to have features. So you discuss for two minutes. I'm gonna grab some sticky notes in a minute. So one must have, two nice to have, you discuss for two minutes. Then after these two minutes, you choose another couple and you form groups of four. And then you need to fight or bargain and come up with one, again, one must have and two nice to have. So at the end of the four minutes, you must decide one must have and two nights to have. You can do whatever you want. You can upgrade the feature, you can downgrade the feature, you can create a new one when you have the second part of the discussion. <coughs> Questions? More this or less is, clear? This is feature specifically to the validation service. Yes. Yeah, it can be a UI feature, can be a, a, a structural like user management um, or something more specific, can be can be anything related to the product, to the digital product. And these can be features that already have. Or yes, I mean, can be features that it doesn't have. Yes. No, no, features that you would like the service to have. And these are added. Feature. So it is an asset. <laughs> no, you can Yeah. Okay. So not what they have already have. So must have, like announcement, top priority. And announcement lower priority. So one top priority per group, two lower priority per group. The first round is two people, the second round is two people with other two people. Okay, well, let me grab some sticky notes. Um, ideally, you want to stand up and choose the space. So don't. let's try to keep it active. Don't choose the guy next to you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, two minutes gone. So now choose another couple and form a group, group of four and discuss for another four minutes. The way yeah, yeah. Easy. Easy. Okay, time's up. Guys, time's up. Uh, we, we have one, two, three clusters. So now each group, each cluster, three, join the stage and present their own feature. Yeah, this is something different up here. Again, it has to be one must have and two nice to have. 
Yeah. I'm also interested in the one that you yeah. discarded, yeah. but you have to come up with one must-have and the nice one. Uh, merging to yeah. I think yeah. that one. Yeah. Who wants to start? Yeah. This one has this. This one has this. Yeah. Here, the pipe. <laughs> We're wrapping up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So now every group needs to come to the stage and present the results. Who wants to start? I'm happy to start. Yeah. Because we only have two, so. Yeah, okay. We, we already violated the rules. Yeah, no problem. That's what I'm saying. What about this? That's what you're for. Yes, all right. And uh, I'll actually make one of your films. So, our, uh, <laughs> our shout-outs are the generic there around geometric typing. So we really think that that's an important part. You know, we're going to say that a file is valid, and we understand that that's kind of harder, but that's where it gets interesting, right, to do the harder checking. That's Otherwise, again, everyone's kind of coming up with their own checking. Uh -huh. So our geometric old check. Right. And there's a, I mean, I, I don't want to, there's a lot of examples of that. And some of the could provide hints. So, for example, I'm working on a corridor, like a rail corridor, that I expect to be so long. And it's actually, you know, 50 meters long because it's scale of right? Uh, but mostly it's around, you've given me garbage geometry, like I have an extrusion of clipping. The clipping doesn't fit the extrusion. Is that on purpose? Or is that a mistake? Uh, the opening's outside. Or I have a super slippery triangle. Like, there's all sorts of possibilities there that I think would be super useful to really say that about okay. And then for the nice to have uh, is really to kind of clean up uh, the packaging to be able to say, here's an API on a DLL or something that you can use to use this locally without kind of going through the magic steps that we saw earlier today. Uh, that would really help people to integrate this into their software for their own local validation or whatever else. Yeah, it's next. Good one. But that's it for us. Questions for Michael? No. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next. Must have we have uh, IDS support, so you can run IDS checking integrated in with the rest of the checking. And uh, nice to have integrated visualization. Uh, like the Greg mentions, and nice report coming out of it. So that's what so, What do you mean by integrated visualization? If you want to be able to, to visualize the model, and if the error, if it makes sense to show the error in the context of the model, then it should show up on the screen. Okay. So you can see that as part of the validation process. Okay. okay. So as we said, as we said this morning, not all errors are of applicable, but of for for those who are. Provide some visual representation. Yeah. The yeah. undraft one was uh, easy local usage. Yeah. Okay. Which is our nice That's what they already said. And I had a nice to have, which I forgot was actually, I guess. Okay. Good one. Never, never made it to stick. No, no, but yeah, it's, it's, it's nice that even the some nice to have are actually priorities for someone else. That's, that's the purpose of having groups. Yeah. Last group. Have them here. Oh, okay. Uh, the first thing is uh, not really a must. That must have something to uh, share responsibility of the file, so it's not uh, if somebody puts a file on there. Stereo should help a little bit for breaking stuff. Yeah, with me. We now we're the two non-developers in the room. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 no problem. No problem. And, and and it's fine. It's my, fine. My concern on that one is that when we start talking about the validation service and different things that we're looking to validate. We have to be careful within the service not to be validating engineering decision. Yeah. And it needs to be associated with, with the data and the file and ability to transport the file. I, I heard some discussion earlier about certain alignment checks within that. Uh, back when I was Bentley, we had people do weird stuff uh, with, with the software. We, we had two people who did roller coaster designs yeah. with the Bentley products. And you try to do a roller coaster check and alignment and versus what's normal, <laughs> what yeah. you think is good geometry. Well, it's and so it's cute. The design speed is eight yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's it's weird stuff, and it's not going to show yeah. up. Um, and so we we need to be sure that the validation has to do with the transport of the file and not taking on engineering responsibility within the validation check. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, the, the main focus at the moment of the validation service is really about IOC validity from the grammar, syntax, and schema point of view, not really yes. getting into the content. Uh, exactly. As someone said this morning, it could be a super valid IOC file, the content can be garbage. 
Yeah, the, the, we understood that it's not actually the case, so we're kind of in between these two positions. Uh, but that's a good point. Yeah, and the other example I use for that is that one of the things that we used to use in checking movement of, of uh, the DTM models between Autodesk and Bentley because they use different triangulation algorithms within their models is we would transport a um, to the users what we, what was called an isofact. It's a difference between uh, two models. Mm -hmm. And um, if you try to compare compare that to what you normally think as a as a viable DTM, um, it's not going to look right because you should have a lot of zeros in it yeah. um, and very small numbers. And then on that same side, we had people that used DTMs to symbolize sediment concentrations within um, water, and it was and, and you could do a contour map of estimating how much sediment you would have fall out of water. Again, numbers that are 0 0.02, 0 0.03, not 200 foot of elevation. So, you know, that's another example why we have to stay away from when we look at the numbers that come across in a mesh or a model or something like that that they are just that they come across not yeah. that they look reasonable yeah this makes sense these kind of checks are out of school yeah and the other one was uh, maybe finding a feature to find you have any kit you have a kit merge option or git diff so it's the difference between two yeah the difference so this, is, this is clearly coming from you right <laughs> if they say they're not in the room well can you you know no, it's uh it comes from the, them oh i could translate in my uh Okay, what was the plain one? <laughs> well, well um, I used to, when we used to use um, XML for all of our reporting um, within the product. So, and XML is great because even dummies like me can, can play with it, okay? And um, I used to use a tool that would, that would compare side to side um, the two XML files, and it would highlight yeah. the differences between the two files, color coded so you can see those. And that would give you a lot of information that's not normal. When we were talking yesterday about um, changes um, in the files and stuff like that, if we had an easy tool during that validation service, if we're looking at two different ones that would compare two files and say, this is what was different in there, and then select which one is the right one that should be in there or merge them together uh, as you do that. Okay, so on the IFC file, not on the validation records output, right? So on the IFC file, Yes. Sorry, the two IFC files. Yes. Should there be three files maybe even? Or is it, should there be even an option to have three files or four files? Yeah, it, it, that's what it would be. I, I don't know that it would be three or four. Usually it's just two that you're comparing and you're not mm -hmm. looking at third so or fourth one. But this is clearly for developers, right? And users will hardly open an IFC file and look at line well, by line. You'll be very surprised. Yeah, I mean, you modified know. manually modified files we get and say, hey, I've been imported. And wonders why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but because it is, you know, basically an ASCII file, you do get people who get in there and yeah, they mess around with it. They, they think they and and especially in, in the DOTs and um you have people within the DOTs that are Civil engineers that no no <laughs> civil engineers who think they're developers, okay, and and most civil engineers that I know who think they're developers are horrible, <laughs> <laughs> just horrible. But the DOTs are usually full of them because they don't have the IT staff to help full time developers a lot of times. <laughs> so your engineers have to take on that responsibility, and they can mess things up pretty bad. Yeah, there's, there's a, the GT example, there's an EC example as well, where a lot of um, uh, the contractor companies, they, they, they have people on staff to write specific tools to get an, an edge in, in, the, in the space. As well. So. well, a perfect example of this, we received files that looked like they came from this tool, but we could clearly tell they came from this. <laughs> what? So they changed the headers on them? Because the contract deliverable was supposed to be. Oh, yes. wow. Uh, oh, that's right. oh. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not surprised at like that. Well, that's, that's just a little This is why we need a signing service, guys. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's an excellent. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't do it. I'm pumped. <laughs> 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 
now, well, and it's funny because I only know I was brought this up because that project won an award last year. Well, progression, I, I think it's moved on since there, but the original data was developed wrongly by the, the contract that was supposed to scan this, this project. And, wow. So let's change the headers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does that sound like to me? That sounds like it's a different tool, right? Like it sounds like you're, you're making a request for a building smart diff yeah. tool, which is yeah, which is not yeah, it, it might be a, yeah, different tool. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, it, it might be out of scope for this okay. particular tool, but not completely a bad idea. At all. No, I think it's very different. Yeah, it's that, that kind of diff tool already exists, and then you kind of uh, you call it that uh, pad doctor. And you really compare two new models visually and share here, here, what's the thing? It is graphically share the differences between two models. And that will help you and for compare with the previous version or even compare the same results from different vendors. So, yeah. really, I see the value. Oh, I, like, I like the visual. I mean, you can combine the visual with the um, error. Um, Visual display on the errors that we had combined that option all together like that. That would be, yeah, we get the engineers out from editing <laughs> things and get them looking at things. I, I like that. That's yeah, cool. They highlight even on the face level, say this face, this face, it changed. Yeah, that's in a really good one. I, I see the value. It, that's well, it, it, especially when you get yeah. to the bidding side of the world and then <laughs> someone gets a, um, a an addendum. Um, before they've submitted a bid, and they want to check and make sure that the addendum is um, uh, description is complete, uh, but it also help them in pre uh, preparing their, their change on their their submittal because you see everything pop up quickly within that. Yeah, so I think that's, that's a good idea. Maybe not part of the validation. No, 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 no. It's, it's it's a very valid point. So checking, I mean, it's also relates to the Delta thing. Checking the differences between one version and the next one. Actually, the, the, I agree. And the, the visualization, one of the things that actually is really challenging is is this supposed to be a VREP or is this supposed to be a mesh? And uh, clearly, if you're visualizing it, so all you have to draw is a mesh. But there, these sort of things are really challenging for people to understand. Like, uh, so, like, just. Color by, you know, visual examples of this is supposed to be a B rep, but it's actually triangulated. These sort of things mm -hmm. really valuable to the viewers. So, right. in all the well, MVPs, they, everything is triangulated. I mean, everything's faster. Well, but the flip side is we get a lot of stuff that is uh, our B reps that people well, I have it, so I'll just put it in there. Sure. Okay. Anything else that we missed? Okay, we go ahead to the next one. In terms of features for the validation service. Okay, so thank you. That would be a great piece in the making. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so before going to the next one, um, I want to touch on one of the previous questions that it was actually hindering, hindering a feature request about versioning of the tool, life cycle of these rules. What happened if I submitted a file at time zero that ended up, well, after one month, we create new rules because we have feature requests for new rules. We discover something new, and then we check the file again. So the file is wrong. Um, this is an interesting scenario, meaning that we expect these to happen, especially in the development phase. So we say now we have ten rules. We are targeting, we are targeting hundreds probably. So in this transition phase. Of course, a file that was valid yesterday will not be valid, possibly not valid tomorrow. So first things that come to my mind, again, this is an open question. It's of course a versioning of rules. So I need to know which version of the rule my file was checked against. First things first. Uh, 
Second, probably also versioning the record. So this was version number one against this file, version number one, using this rule, version number one. Tomorrow I can check the same file or even a second version of the same file uh, against a new version of the rule. And we'll produce another record, which will be the second version. We see record lead. Records is the HTML page. Report. Is, yeah, report. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's I, I see at least three items. I see file. I see files. It's the input. The output is the validation record and the resource that is using the rules. So shall the three of them be version and the version shall be displayed somewhere to advise the user that they are actually. Uh, using different rules, different files. Um, do you see the, someone mentioned, it's nice if we can notify or trigger a, a, an alert that says to the user, look, there is a new version of the validation service with these 10 new rules and three fixings of the previous existing rules. You might want to check again your file. Or do we need to check, like run this check on their behalf, just because we updated the validation service and some rules. So what is the state going to be two years from now? Right? Is, this, is this checker always going to be evolving, or is there going to be a maturity level where you say, it's mature now, from now on, we're not changing the way we check 4.3 or something like that? I envision that will be a point in time where the check the checker validation service will be mature enough to support 403 certification, for example. Okay. So yes, we might, we will for sure uh, find tune and fix rules as we as we go, even after that maturity point. But yes, it might be the case that uh, even after that, we might need to change some rules. Even after that, you might change some rules. Yeah. So we found out uh, even recently discovering that we discovered that the rule needed an extension actually in Montreal. Yeah. And we pointed out that we released a version of a rule, a version one of a certain geometrical rule. And then we discovered that the rule was not wrong, but was incomplete. But we needed an extra step for a particular kind of voice. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was looking at, I think it was a face, right? It was looking at a face yeah. and it was looking at the outer outline of it. But it didn't check. Right, it was right, it was looking at that's what it's looking to make sure something was closed. Yeah. Right. And it looked at the outer loop, but it didn't look for inner loops. And so you had something with inner loops and then it said, Oh, this isn't closed. But the reason it wasn't closed is because it didn't set the loops. Yeah. So in these cases it's a fixed rule for an improved rule. So even after that maturity phase, we might have some fine shipping. So given this risk, which is actually quite concrete. How do we deal with rule versioning, rec records versioning, and file versioning? Um, and ideas? <laughs> I mean, I think it does have to be checked against, you know, this was validated by version X. For sure. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it needs to be very clear somewhere. We should be able to see what the state was so one thing so one one aspect is making it transparent so to clarify the version of the rule the version of the file the version of the uh, reports and then do you think it's enough to notify the user that there is a new version with new rules that potentially have an impact on their existing uh, result or do you think it's we need to really to rerun all the checks on the files that are at least the files that are using the rules that we have changed. Well, I mean, it could be kind of catastrophic, right? If you think about it, like yeah. if somebody runs a project and puts it on the shelf, on well, a year later, you get a notification that, oh, by the way, the thing that you think is valid on the shelf is not. Um, how how are you going to rectify it with the user? <clears throat> Let's go back though. Again, what is the use case here? What is the link? Or why do you care that something about? Oh, the user? Well, I can't speak for the user, but I would assume that um, you need a valid file in order to, to have a model that is 
uh, constructible, for instance, or that um, you can certify and, and stamp them. That you, deliver. you don't want an invalid model. Well, okay. So I could imagine again a use case saying that my deliverable is an IC file that has been validated against at least version X of the validation service. Sure. Okay. Right? And and you have to have that leeway for that reason. You can't be like, okay, I just save it to you and you hear later they come back, oh, this isn't valid because this version is just gonna right. You had to use at least this version of it, but once it's stamped, it's stamped. Well, then I also need to be able to check two previous versions of the validation servers. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, right. I mean, I guess, I guess so, right? I mean, the, the more simple equivalent of this is LOD spec in the US keeps changing every year yeah we have to go back to like well actually we signed this contract for 2016 this is the version that applies that's right well, but I mean, again, and that's why i mean say there should be a stamp right of some sort once the stamp is there it's there right? well but projects are long enough that you could have a contract signed and the validation services progresses three or four steps mm -hmm. and actually i need to go back here because this is the one we agreed to yeah bentley has got a lot of problems with versioning and contracts where uh, do you T say, hey, no, you have to have it delivered on 10.8, okay. which is a version of our application, which is specifically to that, it's not the current version, which makes a lot of sense that year, but that project goes for five, 10 years, right? So now now they have to make decisions halfway, like, oh, now we have to upgrade all our files, we have to do all kinds of things. We don't want to be in the same boat with this, or do we? <laughs> well, okay, so I'm going to ask the three actual end users in the room, right? I would think that the rule would be at least version 10, not exactly version 10. Right? Because again, I'm coming up with my contract today, but it's not going to be done until 2027. You could yeah, but you need you need the, the wiggle room to mean that old versions are less precise. I mean, this is like I signed a contract realizing that this is what valid looks like in at least 10. Mm -hmm. But now uh 10.3 is super precise, and I can't deliver on that without doing 10, you know, twice the work. So you, these things exist both directions, right? Like you, you sign an agreement because you want surety on the owner side, but you also want I know how much work it's going to be on the the supplier side. Sure. So we, so at least it doesn't help. You need like that one. Not, not to mention liability. Yeah, liability is a big, big thing. So it, contracts are very specific. Mm -hmm. And we don't really have the flexibility to change that. Really, it's either you you agree to it or you don't, or you don't do business with us. It's well, how it works. Well, then it might have to be that there are levels, and once the level is set, it's set. Right? Level one is this, and that is what it is forever, including that one bug. Right, and then level two comes out a year later. Every year, there's. A, and October every year, you get the next level of validation service. And it is set. You can work contract syncs it. And yeah, maybe, again, maybe there's level one and then two month period and level 1.1 is the real one because you find all the bugs, right? Uh, or whatever. However, you do it. there's beta, whatever. But yeah, then you can't go back and keep twiddling on level one. It's done forever. And then you can write a contract against it. <coughs> level one is what we're going for. And that's that. That's right. I mean, otherwise you do get into a problem where, well, this was valid. Okay, well, that's because level one completely missed the fact that you missed the floor. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but we we rely on those things. That's right. On both sides of the equation. Yeah, yeah. but that's a bit, But at least there's this is what it is. Right? right. My my issue with not checking geometry is related to that. Right. You have to be very clear on what is this. Yes. Right. And it's nice to be open source. You can literally see. What it is, but if it changes between the time I look at it and the next time I look at it, that's you can't do you can't do anything against that, right? It has to be April, you know, twenty twenty five version of where we are. Yeah, I brought up litigation and, and liability, but actually, that's a, that's probably a non issue if the messaging is very clear that this is the validation is not a civil validation whatsoever, right? This is a file validation. Yeah. Well, um, what, what you're going to get into, and I think um, Alexa is going to do this, is that 
if if the agency starts using the IFC file as the archive yeah. of the project, yeah. then you have to tie the quality, for lack of a better word, the quality of the IFC file to a particular version of the validation service. And the contractor, engineer, whomever is responsible for delivering the IFC file that validates completely within the version of the validation source that we use. And without a contract mod, you can't change or update that. And if it's an archival, that validation service has to remain available some way or another for that agency uh, mm -hmm. to be able when they come back and take it off the shelf five years from now, that if that file won't import and they go back to the engineer, the because they can't import, an engineer can run and say, look, it validates on, you know, April 25th, 25th. I'm sorry it won't validate today on current version. You got to go back to what my contract was. Right. And, um, uh, and at that point, then the owner and the and, and the engineer have to sit down where you created it in, in Autodesk, um, you know, bring it back up in Autodesk, re-export it, and give you one that beats, you know, validation search 27, okay? Because I, I, think, I think you got to, if the DOT, and I think they will start using this as their archival service uh, for, for projects. And I anticipate what they will do is they will either say either the Autodesk model or the Bentley model and an IFC file. And the IFC file will only come into play if there becomes an issue with the model coming from Autodesk or which, which is the reason you do that, so let's assume that happens, right? Yes, exactly. Which I think it's, it's a scary assumption. Um, no. But, like, assume that happens, then uh, what could happen is that if the validation says, okay, well, this is an invalid file, maybe it is an invalid file for that version, and you can't open it in viewers anymore. Yeah. Right now you have a file that you can't open it. Um, that's that's exactly what we don't want to have happen exactly. in an IFC, right? Uh, I think that, that topic is regarding the validation is kind of a law in basically kind of a uh, this the validation is also certified and uh, there is a military uh, technical deliverable package mm -hmm. and when you have mechanical design and you deliver your design package there is a law firm in between to say okay this source a native model plus the stack model need to be certified. Say this stack model is archive, but it's valid at this moment. Mm -hmm. And then the military will archive the data. So the validation at that moment is um, have a law firm to confirm this is the moment is good one. But maybe five years later, yeah. they changed. Yeah. But you, you can compare with five years later. You have to compare with that moment when the law firm did the job. Yeah. yeah. And, and you have to have access to the validation service that was in play at the time the contract was, was, uh, was signed. So you got to have a way to go back to the original validation service. And, yeah. and, that's, and that's fine if you do the subs. Right, because then yeah, he's always keeping. Yeah. Well, if we say we need, you need to be able to go back one way or another. Rules are developed in GitHub, mm -hmm. and they're open source. Yeah. And we demonstrated this morning that you can run it locally. So at any point in time in the future, you can go back to a certain date. Okay. Download the rules that were available. Okay. But, but it <clears throat> has to be run by a third party. You can't have the vendor approve that it works or something like that. This is a bigger building scale <coughs> issue. Yeah, right. Like, building IFC, but one of the major uses of IFC, right, is I don't trust Autocad and Ben to exist in 20 years, much less support their current vibes. That's that's a worry. Right. That they have. Yep. They don't have to be worried at all. But <laughs> right. so IFC is this. Kind of intentionally like this neutral format that will last forever based on the ISO standard. But we already have an example of IFC file. If you created an IFC 2x file or God forbid an IFC 1.1.5.1 file, good luck opening that. Yeah, right. 
Actually, we can read two x plus. But I see four, 4 x plus. Right. Yeah. Those right. Are <laughs> terrible. So we already have an example. That there are a lot of IFC files out there that are actually less, they're more obsolete than the formats that they're supposed to be. <clears throat> I do think building smart does have to have a way that you can protect against that, right? And so I would hope that the validation service has <coughs> an example of that. I wouldn't have to go forensically looking for GitHub on, you know, the 2100, you know, where is GitHub now? And yeah. Where are the rules from 57 years ago? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean it's, it's possible, but this would imply, I'm thinking out loud here, this would imply a web platform that the top right corner can be customized to be brought back to the 2019 version, something like that. The front end doesn't have to go back, right? In theory. Yeah. Saying yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I already see some some compatibility issues, but yeah, right. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, well, I, I'm I'm saying it doesn't have to be that. Yeah. Mean, if, if you say these are the rules for version one, right? yeah. and I can load them in. These are the rules for version two. <laughs> the rules for version two are the version one rules plus the version two rules, or yeah. maybe or maybe the version two rules are just here are the version one rules here are the version two rules, and I just load in whichever ones they want. And check. No, like, it's definitely possible. This, this modular approach make it, <laughs> makes it possible. Right. That, that seems to me 30 years from now, I should be able to say very easily from the drop down, given the 2025 rules. And, but fairly and, and, and the package that you've delivered should mention exactly what rules were applied to verify. Yeah. Okay. So that you can go back to those. So we need some kind of name of that package. Um, but otherwise, yeah. Again, if, 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 if you're going for our practice, Right. That is the major use case issue. And then just pass rules, right? That I see is the archival package. But it's it's not, and it is nice that the text file, so anyone can read it far in the future, but if you actually want to have this be useful. This is why this is why I have that it's the same for all of us that we have to support software for years and years and years and then right. This is this is a commitment, if you will, here in the world. Is that we still need an I mean, that's that's something that we deal with as a contractor for Ashto. You know, Ashto only sunsets a, a product every 30 years. <laughs> so uh, we have to maintain versions of software. It's killing us uh, maintaining stuff that is 20 years old that some <laughs> DOT is still using. Uh, and so it's a, it's a real it's a real issue for, for us. Yeah, I understand. Okay, that's a good point. I mean, that's good feedback to be able to read through. Can it also be the other way around? Because you're now saying that you want to run a test uh, from a version earlier, but I can imagine that after a year, you would also want to run a test from a version later on the same file. Yeah, of course, the user would like to know that the archived file is valid. But what I don't understand is what happens if it's not. If not valid. If it's not, if some new rule makes this thing not valid, the yeah. user would have to understand what happened, right? Now yeah. you have to, you have to have a, a, a message go out and say, well, we recently changed the rules to include this and this. And this. If your file um, fails on this one, then this is what you probably have in the file. This is the ramification of it, and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, that's quite a, quite a complicated thing to do. Well, I mean, you're getting, you get the error report, right? The, the error report is getting the error error report. Yes. yes. Yeah. So do you think we should proactively tell the user that there is an update and they have to run the tests again? Or should we proactively run the tests and only inform them when it now fails? Ask the user. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think that's building smart responsibility. It, it relates a little bit to the question, should we store the files? Because you can only do that when you store the and, files. And the eight and a, and a DOT is going to say no. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I mean, there, there, there are plenty of organizations out there that will say, no, you can't have the file. Yeah. Um, so then in that case, you probably just have. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I think all you do is, is like any software vendor does, is that you, you notify through whatever means are available that there is an update. And then it's up to the users because 
you know, an agency that's got, you know, a thousand IFC files because all the archives is done over the years, you know, looking years down the road. They're not, you know, unless you create some sort of batch process that allows it to run in the background for a couple of days, they're not going to check until the end. And then I think what has to happen is that you get a report. I, I like the idea of the visualization of why it failed. You get a report that shows you why it failed. And then using the software of, of, of choice at that time and frame, when you try to bring out IFC, it'll, it'll tell you that, hey, you know, this one, there's some errors. Do you want to import anyway? And then as a user, you have to take, because you have the report from the IFC verification, you have to say, yeah, I'll import it anyway. I'll fix the errors manually when I bring it in. You would have to fix the errors in the originating application and re export. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. If you know where the errors are and you know that an alignment's got a broken segment in it that won't work, bring in the rest of the alignment in. And, and it may be in the wrong coordinate basis and you know you got to transform the alignment. And both your tools have got both your tools have got great tools for transforming and fixing and and, and right. stuff like that. And so it's the engineer's got to fix it. So you're it, saying take our tool, read in the IFC file, mm -hmm. fix the alignment, export it again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I see some issues. Yeah. I, I think that's what you have to do. I don't I think you asked in building smart to take on too much responsibility if then that's not your job. I'm not sure uh, I see will do that, but instead has the validation properties mm -hmm. stored in the file and they store that information for the archive purposes. They require the step file be archived for 50 years yeah. and those rules practices are, I think they already spent more than 10 years to describe what should be stored there and the Airbus like um, Boeing, they hold, hold it off. And so at this moment, you validate against this properties, for example, the volume of this song, or in the assembly that you have full children and you remember this full children. Later, you read this step file, you do not validate to the other properties. You may have grown and there was more validation properties, but at that year, 15 years ago, and only two properties remember in the file, then you only validate again. At that moment, the information stored store yeah. in the file. Yeah, that's, that's, a good, that's a great example. Yeah, that's a great example. Yeah, excellent example, because then if you change and modify the structure, you have to bring it up to current code. You validate against the old code, and as long as nothing changes, it's fine. We dealt with that in power plants a lot. Plants that were 75 years old. Engineering changes a lot in 75 years. Yeah. I mean, you can extend the same concept to IDS. So tomorrow, today I have an IDS specifying the information for my contract, for my project, and this is very much linking requirements to the file. So 10 years, in 10 years from now, you can go back and check the files against that IDS. <laughs> Maybe in 10 years, your company will evolve and we will reach the IDS and we'll make it more yeah, robust. Uh, yeah, it's a good point. Um, what time do we have lunch? At 12.30. Okay, so uh, Leon, do you have the questions on MDD? Yeah, do I? Uh, yeah, first I want to bring up uh, a picture and then we go to these questions. Because I was expecting some comments. <coughs> yeah. Do you want to bring it up again? Yeah. But uh, do you want to show some first one? Uh, yeah. But <coughs> yeah, go ahead with the main leader first. <coughs> Yeah, the laptop is switched off, and so I'm going to restart it. You can go ahead. Start, you can go ahead. start with this IFC4 update question before the MBA questions. You want to skip that, or? Uh, it's, it's up to you. Yeah, it's. Do they yeah, need I, some I instructions in the thumb? I, don't know. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 
Yeah, so what about updates of IFC4? Um, there's, this, uh, there's this strong feeling with a couple of people that a version of IFC should be published by ISO and software certification should be done against ISO versions. But there's updates. I mean, ten years, ten years ago, IFC four was published as ISO. There's just things that are wrong. I mean, an update. Do we need to put that through ISO? Do we not update that because we don't want to deviate from ISO? These are very religious questions. So I would like to have your input as well. <laughs> uh, who's our outlier? <laughs> Most of us seem to be in the same religion so far. It's a shame we don't have a clear answer. I'm the outlier because I work on airports and this would suck. Because we do have we have to mix this stuff together. Like the people think it's clean. Like we we had to sh make the, change the shape of the building. And that influenced the alignment of the road. Okay. <clears throat> and we're all working on the same project. And if we had files that didn't work compatible, then upgrade them to 4x3. What, why are you not doing that? Yeah, Nobody supports that. Yeah, no architecture should pull us for 4x3 because it's, it's, it's not, not an not really domain. Not for Spark 6.0 is not really doing that. Yeah. Was this the person uh, who voted for the second one? That's me. Great, huh? I, I, I guess for me, it's about look, the software, you create a version, it's done, you go to the next version. Yeah. And I think. Well, so I, the flip side of answering that same, same question, question is make a version that's, that's combined. combined. It doesn't, it doesn't have, have to move forward. To me, it's it, interesting. Interesting. The whole discussion we just had about okay, never mind. I've re I, re I read this incorrectly. So put everything that's in four and merge it with four three, and you get a combined version. What, what, what do you mean everything in four? What is in four? Well, uh, let me. It's probably the other way. Add this stuff into four three. three. Uh, well, I'm thinking about the spatial concepts that I still don't have a clear understanding of how they map together. No, that is a great question. What, what are you doing that you can't? Just call it four three, just because the the software isn't there yet. Well, uh, why do we have four if four three is is uh, inclusive of everything previous? Why do people say you develop twenty twenty one? No, 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 no. But like, why, why, why did build this publish four? And will it publish four three if four three is inclusive of everything that wasn't four plus? Everything that was added. I personally think that's I. I have six four in my mind. It's like, it's like, like Windows eight, right? It came out. No one used it. I have six four point three in my mind. I hope is Windows ten. So the only the only real reason why you make small changes might be like security fixes or something like that. If you if you yeah. find some some real clear syntax issue or I don't know something like that. But I don't know why you would otherwise do that. Actually, well, I'm the name. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, 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 any, yeah, any yeah, questions? Any questions? Oh, no, 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 go ahead. No. Uh, if we talk about a little bit of this thing, we have these NVDs, which are based on the initial levels, and we don't want to deviate from that. Um, but in that case, case are the name <laughs> correct? All right, who's the yellow one? Yep, yeah, speak up. I'm not, I'm not going for your results. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> right. that, oh, that's good, I'll give you that. Yeah. This is why I'm confused. Why would I not have a unified reference view? It's both. both. Yeah. I think we're going to reference you on IMC 403 is very close to IMC 4. Okay. Yeah, just an update of the. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, so why would there be such a thing as alignment based and non alignment based? Yeah, that's the that's well, question here. Yeah. 
guess I just assume non alignment based reference to you is basically building reference here versus infrastructure reference here. Right, but I need both. And you align it based reference. Here. Very odd. Nothing in this book, like, yeah. Well, that would be the name of the next thing we can go into. Yeah. So, folks, wrong. Is that enough for you? Uh, sure, I'm not the only one actually, but something else. From my perspective, I think MVD says a flaw. Uh, I don't, uh, so I I really feel like it should be use case driven, not um, view driven. So, what Alexa also presented, for instance, was this clear use case and, and defining it on, along that use case, what needs to be exported um, is really important. We can't just say that. A reference view is good enough for these use cases. I don't, I don't. Yes, I, I think we're actually slowly moving there. Also, with the ideas that we have with validation service to do that for certification, we're probably going to split the rules up or not split, kind of group the rules in functional parts where you say this software supports alignment and grouping classes. So these huge bulk. Fixed status things that you then certify against. I think that's the <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, you're not going to be specific enough to support yeah. these use cases. Yeah. Right, but I see MDD as the foundation that doesn't force you to come up with the ground rules every single time you want to come up with a use case. Right. We can agree on sure a foundation yeah. of it, and that's the MDD. And then Ashto sits on top of that because that's really about. You know, but you'll find that rules. every single use case that is trying to line up with the MPDs will go like, okay, well, it's kind of like this, but it's, it's not. So let's make our own. Well, well, if we can standardize and say, here are things that we agree is, you know, table space. You want to append to that you can, but let's not start saying that in my use case, all walls should be wired. Right, there's like the B rep thing, for example. I just want B reps. I don't need the uh, anything more than that, but I don't want tessellation. I can't use that as a basis of structure. Okay. Yeah, so that's one use case where you want to you want to have an overview of which tool supports B reps. Don't care if it don't support other things. I think we will slowly move into that direction, but it's, it's a bit of a transition phase where we still have. The I do think that there's a value to MVP, um, and especially the ones that we've identified, like don't get me wrong, but I guess if you only want to do that, is something preventing you from getting to this? No, but we had a meeting in Oops. Singapore that somebody said, well, B reps are hard, so let's do tessellation. And that was it. You mean that advanced B-reps? No. You said, yeah. it's B -reps. Like for the, the I was in the meeting that this got decided, and it was we don't we don't have a good B rep engine, so that's why we did it. Well, you mean why does reference the only precise? Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Right, I, you and I can agree on that. I, right. So, but it's like the, such an arbitrary thing that but that's the basis of everything else. It's a, a, a shit sort of. Nice, nice bridge to the next question. So the the context here is that uh, John Merchant brought this up in the last meeting in Boston. Should we have reference view and alignment based reference view? Because there's really value in these things like extrusions and profiles that we now remove. Uh, so, should, if we have these two levels of IFC, should we have alignment based coordination view? Or should, or should we just call alignment based reference view actual coordination view that also includes alignment? So, this is a little bit, you probably need to read closely to understand this. So there's a couple of options. We keep reference view and then the second level is alignment based reference view like this now, or we extend this second level with extrusions and profiles and rewraps and then it's closer to coordination view with alignment included, or should we just get back the old reference view and coordination view as two levels and then have alignment as an additional extension. That one's the first one. Would you just said last? 
So first one um, is uh, is yeah, is what I said. <laughs> so I have a reference view and a coordination view. Somebody goes to the third one. Yeah, it's interesting. We don't have we don't have returns. No preference for current setup, that's right. What's the little green one? Ask me again later. Because sure. sure. oh. yeah. I did ask one question which wasn't clear to me yesterday and wasn't a lot of documentation, like you said. It's like, what is that exactly in these tools and how does it work exactly? Good I, point. I don't know. I have one picture for that. Where's your mock up? Mock up on the location service. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but that's a good point. Because, I mean, to answer this, I would question what qualifies reference to. It's always the edge cases that are important here, and I need to know exactly what's in it. So I think a big thing, and again, this is one reason why so many four shows, right? Is coordination view has more relationships than reference view. So reference view has some. Um, Resolve geometry. Right? So I have a wall with a door in it. The wall has a hole. Do a like that. And it is all triangulated geometry because here are some hard. Right? And that can be more efficient and it's great for viewers. I mean, I, I can honestly tell most people there's no upgrade in coordination in existence. Reference view has a purpose, but it's not an important for you. So, you know, the intention is back of page. Just something coordination views can sync. It didn't do anything well. This is a conversation I just honestly did a decade ago, right? Coordination view does everything for us, right? <laughs> so we split it to do something that is less powerful and something that's more powerful. And we did the less powerful thing and we didn't do the more powerful thing. Depends on your but yeah, so well, we did the powerful meaning, the one that has less uh, extent. Like, right. right. Sure. It's the most common case, which is very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, I, I see we go to lunch in 20 minutes. Um, so we're probably going to go on, right? Yep. Because I think it's the same question again. Yeah. So let's try again. With a strongly, very really strongly disagree for everything to see how we are. Uh, now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one is have a reference view and extend the alignment based reference view to something that is closer to Croatia view. The second one is have reference view and Croatia view traditionally and then have alignment as an extension. And the third one is have a reference view and an alignment included reference view. So that's what we have to do. Alignment with So wait, in the in the first one, the alignment would not be included in the reference view? It would just be it in would the, be uh, included in the, in the coordination. In the coordination view. All right. So first one is we have two levels, reference view and coordination view. So it's basically <clears throat> Extending the alignment of the view that we have today to include a couple of our extra things, <coughs> which is the most inclusive, yes, option. Yeah, but also the you're basically asking vendors to support more than what we're asking them today. Which is for some vendors they actually like it because they say it's easier for them to just get a profile and extrude it instead of tessellate it. So they would prefer that. But yeah, others, like you said, <coughs> don't have good engines. John is saying something there. What? John Russian is saying something. Oh, we have John. Ah, thanks for raising your coordination view question. I was going to raise it again.
think there is an understanding issue because <laughs> yeah. the previously the current setup was the last road and now it seems okay. Yeah, with the previous uh, question, we have the option to, I don't know, ask me again later. We don't have that here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's influencing the results. So there was a skip option, but I don't yeah. know how it affects the voting. It does not change to the results. Yeah, I, I, did. I think the results are similar, but. Uh, you see the uh... <clears throat> all right so this is uh, this is going to be on the agenda for the next meeting in Paris again probably just to <laughs> make sure you uh, you uh, we get ready for that can you repeat Paris slide where we can see the trend in our like Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not not show the results from six months ago. <laughs> from my political point of view, I would love everyone to choose to use IRC 4.0. Right? And from my point of view, what do we need to do to get everyone to use the latest version of IRC? Yeah. So I think we need to ask people why aren't you using it now? Of course, part of the reason is no one supports it yet, sure. Um, what would prevent you? If uh, of all vendors support IC 4.3, would you use it? Why or not? Yeah. Yeah, and if the coordination view elements are mentioned, then we need to be with that. I think that's the reason why John Merchant already mentioned it, because he's getting feedback and use cases where he's, he's advising that people use coordination view to explain it. So, I mean, the, the Norwegians are very excited about IC 4. When we finally had certified as support, they're still not using it because they like, oh, yeah, it's on the way. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so this is the last question. Uh, this is just to be clear IDS validator, we talked about a little bit yesterday. It checks, it is a tool that we're creating, like an SDK licensed on our MIT that every vendor uh, can use to check the validity of the IDS file, the IDS XML file uh, on export or before export. So this is not comparing IFC to IDS. This is like the IFC validation service. It's an IDS validation tool that you can use to uh, check if IDS XML files are valid. So to clarify even further, this is not the same top request that we got before for the IDS as a feature request for validation service. That's that's what was me always talking about, comparing an IFC file to an Yeah, so a lot of these mean the same thing to me. Probably not. Not probably not the same thing, but they mean the same thing to me. Like That's ones? not a good sign. <laughs> which, which ones were not? Uh, like, check for existing references in PSDs at the same as check. Oh, that was Correct. your idea. Yes, I added it yesterday after your comments. This was your idea. Well, you said when a, when a user has a list of properties, can we search the PSDD for existing properties with the same name? No, that wasn't mine. No. Oh. But it's a good idea. It was a good idea. Okay, now I, now I understand. Now it's yeah. yours. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a good idea, take credit. He's already given good point. Good point. Yeah, good yeah, point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> now I have to make it the first one. <laughs>
Uh, just uh, for uh, for your information, this uh, check correct IFC requirements is is in the on top of the list already for the developer that is creating this. So it's nice to get that uh, confirmation. I think this was the last question. Yeah. So I only have one feature, and then we can go to lunch. Okay. It's actually. Also related to the MVD questions. So when we discuss about what point finds an MVD and how can how can I know about what is inside an MVD and another? So in the experimental phase of the validation service, we did this mock-up, just a mock-up, in which having all the rules, we needed to come up with a catalog of rules. And we said, why not? filtering the catalog based on the applicable version, applicable implementation level, MVD, whatever you want to call it, and functional parts or functional blocks. Some examples, project setup, georeferencing, assembling, grouping, stationing. You can even see these functional parts as the components that we mentioned yesterday, like the plug and play components, the location of an object, the shape of an object, uh, materials of an object, and so on. So this is just a mock-up, uh, and yeah, I just wanted to hear your feedback, even over lunch, uh, about this. Since we need to have any way to present to the users all the rules that we that we have in our catalog at some point, <coughs> um, why don't provide something like this, an overview of the rules that are applicable to a certain version, a certain MDD, and the certain functional parts. Yes. To check these, you have to expand the scope of both uh, IDS, right? Like, um, <coughs> just thinking out loud, groups, all furniture must be in a group. No, no, yeah, good point. No, but this is not the kind of questions, the kind of, of uh, checks that are in the scope of the validation service. So all the rules there are the standard, the rules that are applied to the standard schema and specification, meaning groups cannot fly. They need to be rooted. They need, you need to attach a group either to another group okay. or to the project definition. So these kind of IFC standard level rules that qualifies how you can express a, a, a group in IFC independently from the configuration of the group. So this is really how to get IFC implementation right if you implement grouping. How to get implement IFC implementation right if you get if you implement uh, assembly of objects. Again, this is just me put out your, your feedback now, maybe over lunch. So we have 10 minutes and we don't need to use them if you don't have any very important. Right now, go straight to lunch. So, who's who's the target for this app? Well, I I I got the same feature request from <coughs> end users and vendors. Got it. So I don't really know, but vendors ask me, can you be a little bit more specific? What um, which <coughs> rules do I need to pass to be sure that my implementation is doing assembly correctly? For IFC for the free. Reference me. Right. And also end users, they ask me the same question. Can I know what all the rules that you're checking on my file? Given that I gave you an IFC 2x3 reference view file, can I know all the, all the rules that you will be checking? Hey, this is not the, the answer. This is just a mock-up of, yeah. We've got these feature requests from both parties. So the validation service, 
can it check against reference view versus <coughs> formation view or whatever? Yeah, at the moment, uh, most of the rules, <coughs> they have a given statement at the beginning that says either an IFC file of this version and these MVD, then check this DCP. So that's why I said before, some rules are not wrong or right, they're simply not applicable. We did a, we did a voice of the customer, the market analysis on what people want for a software certification. And the strong voice that came out of there is that they said, I want to do self analysis for specific use cases. So it comes back to Greg's example again. I don't care if parts of my IFC file are correct. I, I want to know if georeferencing is correct. I want to know if VREP is correct. So, but checking VREP is not one rule. It's a so selection of rules. So the idea is to, to have those use cases or functional parts, if you want to call them, uh, categorized where you say, okay, if I'm only interested if georeferencing is correct in this file, then select that, <coughs> get the set of rules, that uh, need to be uh, valid. So that, that goes for checking just one file, but it also goes for the metrics of visualizing. Uh, so if, if I'm interested in a certain <coughs> software tool, I'm not interested in a certain software tool does whatever kind of functionality, correct or incorrect. I want to filter very specifically on your reference, it be reps or alignments. Perfect example of I had to do when we started looking at owner history, I had to export a file and dump it into five tools to figure out does it support, does it give me owner history? Yeah, and that's a perfect example. And one did. Okay. What do you want to do after lunch? I would suggest this talk with the uh, with Neil and Ben presentation. Oh, okay. Because in theory, we have this IFC for the pre implement form, but right after lunch, there is a huge uh, chance and a huge lot of it. So maybe it's something more appealing and interesting, like their their presentations. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But then I'll put the base in the end. Yeah, so I think you need a lot of hours. Yeah, introduction. Yeah. Deep as well? Yeah. So let's start with that option. Good. And then you want to do increments for before we use the DB? Yes, maybe. Yeah, I have a hard time.